All right, Paul Schwartz, as promised, New York Post covers the Giants and a lot going on, a lot of layers when you talk about this Giants team right now, that is for sure. And Paul Schwartz, a U Albany grad, joins us here on Big Board Sports 104.5 at Team ESPN Radio. Good morning, Paul. Guys, yes, a lot of layers, just like what you need um, outside. Oh are you guys getting? You guys are getting killed with the snow today, or no? No, with uh, no, we're not. You are right. Bomb. Yes, <laughs> just just. I was outside earlier. It is like a white, white winterland on the first day of spring out there. It's amazing, isn't it? I'm talking to Albany, New York, and. You guys are dry and we're snowbound. Yeah, well, you know what? The last couple of weeks, though, we've been not, we've been far from dry. We've, has it been three? I think we've had three storms in a row. This would have been the fourth, and it, and obviously it just missed us, so you're, you're getting the brunt of it. Yeah, Stay the only in. bombs you guys have are uh, kind of fields attacking the net, right? <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I know you're paying attention to that. UA men's lacrosse team, and they, uh, we just said, boy, any, it, you just get the feel if they don't win the national championship this year with this team, it would be a disappointment. Well, you know what? Uh, you, final four, you know what I mean? You get to the final four, and then you go from there. I mean, they've never been to the final four, right? Right, right. So, yeah, so that, that's, I mean, I think that's, you know, your national championship sometimes, you know, if you lose a game 10 9, that's rough, but uh, they got to get to the final four. Their team's good enough to do that. Hopefully they'll stay healthy and do that, and then you know, then you kind of size up and see who you're playing, and and you go from there. But yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's like, it's like an explosion waiting to happen. Watching that team, it's great. Yeah, 16 unanswered goals yesterday after they uh, fell behind uh, three nothing to Canisius, and then they they roll 19 to 11. Uh, Paul, let's get to the big story with the Giants. I, my gut tells me, and everything that you're writing and I'm hearing, and just. Just my gut tells me Saquon Barkley is going to be the pick on draft night at number two for the Giants. Yeah, I mean, I had you know I had a story today in the Post. We had a nice back page, Blues Clues. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not I, you know I, I you know five weeks before the draft, I didn't come out and say this is who they're taking and this is who they're not taking. But it's just you know from people I've talked to, from kind of things I've observed, um, I just you know it, it's two things, Roger. You know, and Chris, it's. Do you take a quarterback or do you look at everybody else, right? I mean, that's the way you can break down this draft. And then the everybody else you can talk about. You know what I mean? You, you can debate some guys there, but it's either quarterback or anybody else. And I just don't think they're going for a quarterback. And, and, and I, I, I pretty much know for a fact that they don't look at this group and say, you know, this is, you know, Big Ben, Eli Manning, and Phillip Rivers from 2004. And people say, well, what are you going back that far? You know, 15 years to, to – to, to evaluate a draft class. What I'm saying is Dave Gettleman has said, you have to look at this second pick as a guy who can be a Hall of Famer, and, a, and, and you have to say the number two pick in this draft has to hold up as the number two pick in any draft. And I do not believe, I strongly do not believe, that the Giants look at these quarterback prospects and say, Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, and Josh Allen would, could, would stand the test of time as a number two pick in any draft. And then the follow-up to that would be, if, if they're not going quarterback, then they must be satisfied with Eli Manning being their guy, maybe for a couple of years, which is what they've said, and then the backup Davis Webb with a promising future. They must like the quarterbacks that they currently have. Well, people, people all say, you know, well, how can you not, you know, Eli's 37. How can you not take a quarterback and set yourself up for the next decade? Well, you, you don't take a quarterback if you don't love one of the quarterbacks. You know what I mean? I mean, th- th- people say, well, you have to get someone after Eli. Well, they just are coming off 14 years with Eli Manning, right? They see what a franchise quarterback looks like. If they don't think these guys project to be that or they think there's too many, and eh, maybe, yes, could be, upside, that kind of thing, then you don't do that. But what do we always say? The desperate teams are the ones that come in last. You've got to make a board and stick to it. And I, I am firmly convinced that when they finish their draft board, it'll be Barkley, Bradley Chubb, and Quentin Nelson in some order. And 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 I don't. Um, I, I fairly strongly believe they will not take Nelson because he's a guard, not because they don't think he's a great player at number two. If they trade down, I think yes. And I would say if it's Barkley and Chubb, they believe Barkley is the better prospect. And I know that would. Um, Make you, Roger, feel very happy. Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm now full throttle, full throttle. They need to get a special running back, and I think Barkley is is special. I know it's it's not common to take a running back that high, but I, I think this kid is the real deal and would just be a great fit for the Giants. 
And also you say a special running back. I, I, would, I would even broaden it. They feel they need to get a special player. Okay, now if this was, if, if, if this, you know, if Bradley Chubb was rated as the next Reggie White, I think they may flip-flop that. You know what I'm saying? They, they look at this and say, we need to get a special player. And they look at these quarterbacks and say, the odds of these guys of being a special player is less than certainly Barkley and these other guys. Uh, and also, yes, as you mentioned about Eli, they've already said, we think Eli can still play. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not stamping that, that uh, we guarantee, you know, a money-back guarantee, Eli will be the quarterback the next two years. So if you're going to play with a 37-year-old quarterback, then what do you do? They saw what they, they're saying last year was not Eli's fault. It was everything around Eli's fault, or else they wouldn't stick with Eli. So what do you do? You improve his whole situation around them. They've done that so far. They probably have a little more work to do, offensive line. I believe they look at Saquon Barkley and say, he can make Eli Manning younger and, and, and just a better quarterback because now you have a guy, Pat Shermer's offense, you can throw the ball to. He can, he can block. He can, he can pick up a blitz. He can play on every down. He can line up as a receiver. You can give him the ball. Now Eli Manning, what was he great all those years at? Play action passing. Now you can get back into that. So they, they look at it as, you know what, Eli Manning's 37. If we give him Barkley, he's going to be a younger quarterback. Paul Schwartz of the New York Post with us here on Big Board Sports 104.5, the team ESPN Radio. You can find him on Twitter uh, at NYPost underscore Schwartz, and he's got the greatest cover photo currently on Twitter. Go check it out. Paul, I'm, I'm hoping you will go down this road of, of fantasy with us. Roger threw this out about 15 minutes ago. If... By some act of, I don't know, the Browns take Saquon Barkley number one, what would the Giants do it to? Well, uh, that's interesting. And, um, you know, I think they could just sit, you know, people say it, 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 they have to trade out. I don't understand this, this reasoning. You, 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 you stink for a reason, right? You stink to get a great player. Um, do, do I think they would just sit there and take Quentin Nelson or Bradley Chubb? I think there's a chance. But, yes, I could see. But, you know, you have to have... You know, it takes two to tango, right? You you could certainly trade out. You need someone to rush up there and get now. You look at a team and say, wait a second, the Browns just took Barkley. We have fill in the blank, probably Sam Darnold, but maybe one of the other guys, Josh Allen or uh, Josh Rosen. We have him number one. We can go up to get a number one quarterback. Would, would the Broncos do that with um, John Elway, even after getting Case Keenum? They might, sure. So you know what? You want to go... If you're the Giants, see, I think the Bills at 12, you have to get an absolute King's Ransom. To go down to 12, you're not going to get that, you know, first or second tier impact player. You're going to have to get the Bills two first round picks, two second round picks, and I firmly believe their first round pick next year. Then you have to consider that. But the Broncos, if the Broncos want to move from five to two, now the Giants look at it and say, the way this draft board is going, the Broncos are going to take a quarterback, the Jets are taking a quarterback, we're going to get. Bradley Chubb or Quentin Nelson at number five, who is one of our top three rated players, and we get a couple of second round picks from the Broncos. Sure, I could see them doing that. Mm. Mm. It's going to be quite interesting. Uh, Paul, one more question for me. What, what do you make of the new head coach and the new general manager? Some early thoughts on those two. Well, the new old general manager, right? I mean, I've certainly known Dave Gettleman for many years. He worked with the Giants for 15 years, so I've known him certainly. Over those years, and he's as advertised, you know, he's funny. He's got that crazy Boston accent. The other day, I'll tell you guys, the other day at the, uh, not the other day, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, several weeks ago at the Senior Bowl, I'm talking to him. He's in a small group. He's talking, and he keeps on saying, everybody needs Connors. Everybody needs Connors. You know, you need Connors. You can't have too many Connors. And I'm thinking, <laughs> who is this Connors? You know, C-O-N-N-O-R-S, right? Connors. I mean, I must be, you know, i got to study up on what's going on here. Who's Connors? He was talking about corners. <laughs> he comes up with these words, corners. Everyone needs corners. Okay. Everyone needs Connors. Connors. Everyone. He's got a couple of those Boston zingers in there that make you crazy. It's very funny. So I think he's a straight shooter. Uh, you know, I think the Giants are in good hands with him in this draft. Um, and, and let's not forget, one other thing while I digress, he did last year running the Panthers draft take Christian McCaffrey at number eight. Mm. Right? At number eight, and Christian McCaffrey, in my mind, who is a terrific player, is not nearly the total package of running back that Saquon Barkley is. So if you can take McCaffrey at eight, you can take Barkley at two. Uh, as far as Shermer, uh, you know, Gettleman said it best, he's an adult. 
He's a straight shooter. I don't think he's going to, quote-unquote, win the press conference. He kind of speaks in a little bit of a monotone. But you just get the sense that he's, he knows what he's doing. Look, we, we, he's got a track record um, as an offensive coach. He's got a track record for winning nine games in two years in Cleveland with the Browns, which should get him a statue, right, <laughs> uh, considering what's going on in Cleveland the last two years. So um, I think it's a very, very adult, mature group right now with the Giants. Paul, I want to bother you with one more here. Are, are these more red flags, or is it much ado about nothing with Odell Beckham Jr. this offseason? Well, I mean, this video is not a, is not a um, something the Giants do high fives over. You know, it's not great. It's not a great look, but um, I don't. it's not a deal breaker, put it that way. It's not, okay, now we got to think of trading him. Look, this Odell thing is going to run its course. He's not healthy right now. Uh, the Giants, I believe it's April 9th, start their off, yes, April 9th, start their off-season, you know, program. Odell won't be there, I don't think. Um, I don't think he should be there. He, he's got a one, he's on a one-year contract. He's not healthy. Uh, no reason for him to show up. It's, it's voluntary. So I think, I think what Odell has to do is get healthy, prove he's healthy, show up in the summer. Joey's running around on ankle surgery, you know, it's not going to uh, set him back. And then, um, you know, keeps his mouth shut, uh, does his thing, and I think they'll work out a deal with him. I don't think they're going to trade him. I think they want him. I think they, they you know, why wouldn't you want the guy? I mean, yeah. he's, he's a great player. I mean, he's a little bit of a flake. I get that. But at the end of the day, right, this was a video of a 25-year-old superstar stud who was in Europe and, you know, posting pictures of him running around with Ronaldo, right? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a star, Odell. And apparently, by all indications, he met a beautiful French model, and they spent the night together. Well, geez, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, two two unmarried, you know, beautiful people spending the night together um, with a pizza. Okay. What's better okay. than that? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's that's uh, that's not a deal breaker in my mind. <laughs> love it, love it when Paul comes on, sets everybody <laughs> sets everybody straight, no doubt. Hey, Paul, appreciate a few minutes as always, and uh, it, it's going to get interesting uh, certainly in the next five weeks. And then we'll see what the Giants do. Thanks, guys. You can, if you want to show up in about, you, if once you're off the air, about three hours drive down to Long Island, you can help me shovel, okay? <laughs> I'll take a pass on that. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Later. <laughs> Paul Schwartz, New York Post. I've uh, been covering the Giants for a long time.